Hi, in this video we're going to talk about using advanced search methods and alternative search methods to um, help increase the probability of getting good resources in your in your internet searches. For example, let's start off with Google and let's do a basic internet search. Let's say we're doing a project with students on alternative energy. So let's search for alternative energy in Google, which is what most people do, is just type in their keywords and hit search. And you'll see that we're looking at results 1 to 10 of 69 million. Okay, And alternative energy news, alternative energy, there's a wide variety of different resources here. And, you know, they may or, they may, or may not be positive resources, but that's a lot of things to, to, to scroll through. And what we want to do is look at ways to narrow that search down and increase our probability of finding the information that we want. So if you've never noticed, to the right of the search button in Google, there's a little button that says advanced search. And don't let the word advanced scare you because it's actually quite simple to do. And you notice that it says find web page that have all of these words, alternative energy or an exact word, word or phrase. Well, actually, this is a phrase, alternative energy. So I'd probably do better off moving this into an exact word or phrase. I want the words next to each other in the article, not apart from each other. Okay, And you can choose to also have other words or words that you don't want. Say I'm doing a project on alternative energy, but I'm really not interested in wind energy because I've already done a lot of research on that. I'll put the word wind in there and it won't include it. Now, uh, the results for displaying this doesn't make much of a difference. You can notice that you can search for different file types, which is extremely helpful if you're a teacher because you can search for things like PDF documents for handouts or PowerPoint presentations that match your search. I'll leave it on any format for now. You can also search within a site or domain. The example they have there is um, youtube.com or .edu. So you can type in a specific site that'll search within, or you can put in an extension. I'm going to put .gov. That means that I'm only searching for sites, uh, government sites that deal with alternative energy and not wind. If we hit the plus here, we can get a few more options too. How recent is the page? Well, alternative energy is something that is very recent in the news and is changing all the time. So I'm going to set this to the past year, and that means I'm only going to get results that have happened in the last year. Okay, usage rights would refer to um, permissions that the author has given for using the information. Where your keywords show up is also an important thing. Do you want it to show up in the title of the page, in the text of the page, in the URL of the page, or in links to the page? I'm going to choose title of the page. I think it's important enough that I want alternative energy in the title of a page that I'm looking at. You can also choose by region, um, and that's uh, primarily countries. If you wanted to look at alternative energy in, in different countries, uh, you could narrow your search that way. You can use a numeric range if you're looking for numeric values. And you'll notice on the bottom, uh, for some alternative things, you could find pages similar to a given page. That's if you knew a page that you liked. Um, you could type it in there and see if you find pages similar to it. Or you can find pages that link to a page. So if you find a page that you like or that you're not sure about, you could type that in there and see which other pages link back to the page in question. Once you've filled in all your options, click on Advanced Search. And you'll notice that now I'm looking at results 1 through 10 of 197. Still probably not going to read 197 articles, but that's a lot more manageable amount. And I did that by looking just for sites that are government related, that have alternative energy in the title and do not include the word uh, wind. Another tool that's really helpful in Google is uh, Google Scholar. And you can either go to scholar.google.com or if you go on the front page, click on more and go to Scholar. And Google Scholar is really just a search through um, scholarly articles instead of the entire internet. And so you can you can log in and do that. You can still do advanced scholar advanced search methods within the scholar search and you can tweak your scholar preferences and things like that. And again, it's not guaranteed to give you completely reliable um, perfect information, but it should increase the probability that the information that you're getting a higher number of the results are good valid resources. 
The second suggestion for getting better results from your searches is simply to try other search sources. Now, Google's obviously the most popular, and I have nothing against Google. I think it's great. Um, but a lot of times you can get different results by using different search engines and get out of the rut of the same sort of results that you keep getting. Um, and there's a lot of different sites that you can use. I'm not going to highlight them all, but I want to give a few different examples that I think are good. Uh, the first example is dogpile.com. The nice thing about dogpile is what it does is it basically takes the results from a variety of different searches and puts them together into one for you. So when you search dogpile, you are getting results from Google, Yahoo, Microsoft Live Search, and Ask.com all in the same place. So you can see on a result next to it where it was found. The first two are found on ads by Google, but down here this is found on Google, Yahoo Search, and Ask.com. So you can find potentially a wider variety of things in your searches. Now you still want to potentially use the advanced search features just like in Google to narrow it down, but a lot of times you can get different results by using different search engines, and Dogpile is a good example. The next example is a site called searchme.com. Searchme.com is a, call it a, a visual search engine, um, and that is that it gives you results visually. So you notice I've, I've done a search for alternative energy, which we're using as our example, and the first result, instead of being a link, is actually a picture. I can see what that page looks like, and I can see um, you know the regular description that I'd see kind of in Google with the title and a little short description and a link if I hover down here, but I can also see the picture right away. And that can sometimes help me out because I can immediately recognize in some cases that, for example, this is a Wikipedia page. Um, and I can immediately either uh, rule that out or know that it's something that I want to look at. Um, Smarter.com, uh, business.com. Uh, so a lot of times seeing it visually can help me very quickly decide if it's a page that I'm interested in or not. And if it is, I can, I can follow that link and look at, look at it a little bit more closely. The other example that I want to give is Quintura. And Quintura is another example of a visual search engine, but it works a little bit differently than searchme.com. Let me do my same search for alternative energy. And what you notice is that on the right side of the screen, I get results that look very similar to my standard Google search or other search. Um, but on the left side, I get what's called a tag cloud. And you'll notice that in the middle in blue are my two search terms, alternative and energy. And surrounded by it are other terms that could be suggested by Quintura as being related to your search. This is really helpful for students as they're thinking about coming up with keywords and search terms for um, their searches as they're just learning how to search on the internet. All I have to do is say um, look at some of those suggestions and I might say well um, yeah I'm looking at these and I think that what I really want to know is uh, about renewable resources that that seems like a good a good phrase word to add to my search and so if I click on it you'll notice that my links on the right update and my tag cloud on the left changes it adds that word to my search now maybe I see on this cloud um, I see the word um, Wikipedia. Well, I don't want any Wikipedia results, and if I hover it, you'll notice that there's a minus sign to the right of it. If I click that minus, it takes that word out of the search, and I won't get any results that um, have Wikipedia in it. And I can keep going on with this process, either adding words or taking words away, and narrowing my search down, watching how those links on the right change until I get some results that I'm comfortable with. And again, it's a great activity if you're not sure, if you're not getting good results with the terms you're using, to come to Quintura and practice with different keywords, see what they're suggesting, and then go back to Google or another search engine and type in the different combinations of words that you found, or use the results that you find in Quintura. Now the last example that I want to give isn't really a search engine, but it's such a commonly known source of information, and I think you can use it uh, 
as part of your search and research process, and that's Wikipedia. And of course, concerns about R Wikipedia revolve around anybody being able to sign in and uh, become an author and add information to it. Um, and my take on Wikipedia is that I wouldn't use it if I was citing uh, resources for a major uh, research paper or, a, or an important research project, but I would use it as part of my search and information gathering. Let's look at, it, at an example of an article to see this. I'm going to go to today's featured article, which happens to be the history of biology. And of course, you get on Wikipedia a nice uh, sort of summary article of whatever topic you're talking about. And you may have some concerns about the, the reliability. I think that um, they actually do a very good job of, of policing it and keeping up to date. But there certainly are times where fictitious um, or just bad information leaks onto, leaks onto the site. Um, so I think it's okay to read over the article, get a good summary that is that is probably probably fairly reliable. Um, but what you'll notice as you read through is that a lot of authors have chosen to cite their sources. And you can see, for instance, here a number one and a number two. If I click on that, it takes me down to the bottom to the notes section where the author has actually cited the book they're getting their information from. And if I look through this on this particular article, I have um, you know, well over 50, actually over 100 different notes, and then I have this whole series of references that people have put in here to back up what they've put on Wikipedia. Most of the good authors on Wikipedia want you to believe what they're saying, and they want to back up what they're saying and give it credibility by citing their sources. So a great way to use Wikipedia if you're searching for information is to look for the articles on the topic you're searching for, but then check down at the bottom and read uh, the references. Uh, not every reference is going to be necessarily great. Um, it's possible that that the references aren't aren't good, but it does give you a place to to start, and you're probably going to get a higher pro probability of finding good references there than you will in a random uh, Google search. Just keep in mind that each reference needs to still stand up to the same scrutiny that you put any other website under before you um, cite it.